Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with Mayville. This time we've got a multimeter review and uh, I reviewed a, a meter from the company Tesman in the past. Uh, it was just a, a conventional multimeter and it was like most multimeters, pretty good really. Um, and Tesman asked me if I'd like to review their latest uh, smart multimeter. Well, I've done a few smart multimeters so um, I said I wasn't too bothered about that and they asked if there was anything else I'd like to review. So I had a look and I spotted this clamp meter which is the TCM 300D. They do two clamp meters. This one is uh, also does DC current which is why I was interested in it. So uh, that's what we're going to look at and just, just for clarity Tesman have sent me this um, free of charge uh, and uh, they haven't set any restrictions on what I can and can't say so I'll just tell you what I think and uh, if you like it and want one I'll make sure there's some links in the description they won't be affiliate links um, I don't do channel sponsorships in that sense so if you want one it's entirely up to you or hopefully I'll be able to get you a at least get you a discount code if nothing else so let's um, let's go and get take a look at uh, the details on the bench okay here's the uh, the meter then in its box and uh, try and keep it in that direction so you can uh, see it properly on the on the screen uh, quite a decent manual it's a multi-language uh, manu uh, manual but uh, the, certainly the first um, 17 18 pages actually are, are in English and I'm pleased to say they most definitely are in English uh, the translation is um, is very good and uh, certainly uh, clear enough to read so it sets out the usual um, uh, ways to operate uh, the instrument and then there's uh, a specification at the back so we will have a look at uh, some of those features so yeah handbook's good uh, meter itself uh, comes in a, a zipped pouch uh, so if you're going to keep that in a toolbox that's always useful um, as you hopefully can see here it's completely uh, unopened so far uh, in here we've got some uh, we've got a thermocouple we've got some probe set uh, we've got three uh, Duracell batteries and the meter itself and uh, there's a bit, little bit of padding in the bag here and there's also a, a pouch in there as well as a elasticated grip so it be possible for instance to keep things in the back so the meter is in a um, sealed plastic bag looks like we need a screwdriver to fit the batteries so I'm going to go ahead connect up uh, get the batteries in connect it up and then uh, we'll have a look uh, at some of the features okay here's the meter batteries in powered up you obviously see the display there it's uh, reasonably clear and we've got um, uh, two modes of operation i'll switch off first of all uh, so when you start the meter up it goes straight into uh, it goes through a little calibration routine and then it goes into auto mode i just want to show you a couple of things in auto first um, and it's also showing you the the temperature from the uh, uh, internal parts of the instrument so um, I don't propose to go into a lot of trouble about about volts etc you know it's a it's a digital multimeter compared to what we had years ago it's in, they're incredible I wouldn't expect this to be any different um, but it does do uh, resistance capacitance it does diodes and a few other things so I've got here some resistors and I've quite deliberately picked a very small one a very large one so here we've got a very large value resistor and those numbers scribbled on it are from my uh, Kelvin probe fitted LCR meter and that makes it 8.083 mega ohms and you can hopefully see the meter is hovering around the 8.09 something like that remember the LCR meter was saying it was 8.083 so um, for such a high value resistance that's actually pretty good now here I've got a very low value resistor it's 0.1 ohms and just want to show you uh, one of the things that happens with when the meters in auto and that is if I now put that you, you notice it detected that that was a resistance without any difficulty so if I now put it on here I get a beeping sound I get the green LED come out the top 
and it is giving me a reading of 0 0.1 which which is correct um, but what what we've actually got here it's gone into continuity test mode because it considers that to be uh, pretty much a short circuit and to be fair 0 0.1 ohms it's not that far off um, so what you can do um, we're in auto but you can use the function button so if I step through to gone too far sorry if I step through to amps volts ohms so it's now uh, not uh, in smart mode it's still auto ranging uh, and if I now pop leads onto that resistor It is saying 0.1 ohms, which is correct, um, and I think that's uh, pretty good, really, for uh, quite a stretch for a meter like that, 0 0.1 to uh, to 8, 8 mega ohms. So yeah, resistance absolutely fine. Uh, let's while we're in manual, let's now step around to capacitance. Now it says it reads from, I think it's about. Uh, five nanofarads up to about 600 microfarads so i've got a, a one nanofarad capacitor here i'm just going to turn those probes around that's it so this is one in and considering that's outside the stated um, spec it's doing all right at uh, 0 0.988 that, so that's one nanofarad and it's correctly picking it up as well 0.988 nano, uh, nanofarads that's okay so I've got a couple of larger value electrolytics this is the reason I wanted to swap the leads around so I didn't forget so these are polarized so this one's right in the middle of the range you'd expect and it takes a moment to, to get there but this is a 47 microfarad and it's getting 47.6 there and this one is a little too big um, it's above uh, the 600 microfarad so let's just see what she makes of it you can obviously see the response time is a little bit longer it's having to um, work a little bit harder but it's now telling me 2.262 millifarads uh, or if you like 2259.58 microfarads and yes this is a 200 a 2200 microfarad capacitor so it is managing uh, to work uh, outside its uh, specified range there certainly up to 2.2 millifarads I did try a really large capacitor and it wasn't reading quite so well but to be fair it was outside of its stated spec anyway so that uh, wouldn't have particularly been a fair test so we'll hop around now uh, just while we're here to diode or you've, well I go to continuity so you can, you've heard it working already now that's working fine little little bit of digital lag as you often get so we're going to diode and we've got a couple of different leds here so uh, absolutely nothing there that's because i've reverse biased them and the same there but if i swap the probes around now to forward bias them uh, the red led um, it's saying as a forward voltage of about 1.86 something like that 1.859 for if you foresee and I expect the blue to be a little higher so what's make of the blue yeah 2.574 so there are some of the uh, more obvious features right so next I'm going to look at current um, and uh, I'm going to look at briefly at DC current with using the clamp but then I'm going to look at AC current and to do that I'm going to need to relocate into the to the workshop uh, so I can take some uh, current measurements using some of my uh, machines and we can have a look at the uh, inrush current facility that this meter has. Okay just uh, before we go on to AC current I've got a, a vehicle battery here and I've currently got it uh, on trickle charge from a bench power supply uh, through these two leads here. The bench player supply is reading about 35-ish milliamps so um, the clamp meter uh, also does DC. Now um, I find this particularly handy feature so uh, I've gone into into amps on manual mode and you can see it's reading about, about, th well, about th 30 milliamps, 40 milliamps there so if that is the case we need to just calibrate that so we just hold the 
selecting rush zero button there and there you go so it's now reading zero so I'm now going to put the meter apologies if you can't see it quite so well as just about as much in the middle as I can of the positive lead and you can see it's reading 30 milliamps okay it's reading minus 30 milliamps uh, if I was to turn it over it would read um, plus 30 milliamps it's just uh, this is based on magnetism now you do need to for DC you do need to hold it in the middle and reasonably at right angles to the, to the supply but you can see there um, yeah it's measuring 30 milliamps and the power supply is currently saying 27 milliamps is being supplied to the battery uh, just trickle charging as I say so that's DC um, current and just for a little bit more realistic test something you might actually use it for I've got a vehicle battery here and we can um, it's a, a fog light battery I think uh, now that's probably completely destroying the exposure but what I will do now I'll zero the meter against reading zero hopefully you can see that and I'll just pop that through there you probably can't see that I'm going to just apologies really difficult to do this um, okay not really at right angles but you can see it's about 1.8 amps um, and if you put that on a conventional meter we do indeed get about 1.8 amps being drawn um, so that's it measuring a slightly higher current now if I now disconnect it because it's taking a bit of charge out of the battery uh, the battery is, is now drawing um, about 550 milliamps off the um, the power supply as it charges so I'll zero that again and we'll just pop that back on there sorry I've pressed a button when I was doing that uh, okay so that's zeroed let's pop that onto there and you can obviously see it's reading 380 milliamps and at this point the display the supply is doing 378 milliamps so um, even at a, a low milliamp range that's actually um, uh, pretty accurate and that's it's quite handy I have actually found that really useful uh, when I've been checking that uh, vehicle batteries have been charging and also to check how much current was flowing through some jump leads um, a couple of weeks ago I used uh, clamp meters to do that as well right what we'll do now is we'll um, we're going to go on location to the workshop and see if we can measure some uh, some AC current. Okay, welcome to my workshop. This is my Alba Model 1A shaping machine. Here's a still photo of it. Uh, it's from the 1940s, nice machine. These days it's got a single phase motor here, driven from this no volt release, and there are two separate wires go from here to the motor. The motor itself is earthed through the chassis of the um, of the machine, but it's just a really easy way to get it a uh, um, a single conductor that's carrying AC which is what we need to try out the AC function so the meters on uh, auto so I'm going to start the, uh, the motor like so and grab the middle conductor there I'm hopefully going to get a reading yeah we've got a reading so I'm going to press hold there we are 2.97 amps hopefully you can uh, see that there now I'm going to see if I can have a go at measuring the inrush current. I've never done this before, so be interested to see how that works. So we're in amps. So we need to go to amps. We need to select inrush, like so. And then we need to put the meter onto the wire and start the motor. And I'll stop it again because we've got a reading. There you go. Uh, briefly. It reached 18 amps um, when it was starting up. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so that's quite a considerable amount of current um, before the motor settles down. Okay, there you go. That's AC current in inrush measurement. Okay, well there you have the Tesman TC M300D uh, AC DC clamp meter. Um, does what it says on the tin. Now there are other functions on here which I've not uh, shown you uh, testing like temperature and frequency. I'm more than confident it'll be uh, more than capable of doing those. Uh, it also has this live wire detection feature. It's not something I ever make much use of but it's there. And of course it has a, 
a little torch built in here or for those of you listening in the new world a flashlight um, and so yeah that's a nice uh, solid feeling um, uh, meter to me and I think that's uh, that's all right so there are uh, there is a link in the description it is not an affiliate link um, uh, I'll put a discount code in as well so if that's something you fancy get yourself a bit of money off with a discount code makes no difference to me I don't earn anything off it uh, but hopefully at least seeing the meter in use has allowed you to make an informed decision before you purchase thanks very much for watching look forward to seeing you on the next video